The International Criminal Court at The Hague could issue arrest warrants against Israeli leaders, including Benjamin Netanyahu, accusing them of war crimes. The latest war on Gaza, coupled with increased and illegal construction of Israeli settlements in occupied territory, earmarked for Palestinians. This would mean if the ICC does issue these warrants, it would be a first levied against Israelis. ICC member states, of which the U.S. is not a party, would be expected to arrest and hand over defendants to The Hague should those charged enter their territories. Benjamin Netanyahu had this to say, Under my leadership, Israel will never accept any attempt by the ICC to undermine its inherent right of self-defense, the threat to seize the soldiers and officials of the Middle East, only democracy, and the world's only Jewish state, is outrageous. We will not bow to it. Israel will continue to wage to victory our just war against genocidal terrorists, and we will never stop defending ourselves. While the ICC will not affect Israel's actions, it would set a dangerous precedent that threatens the soldiers and officials of all democracies fighting savage terrorism and wanton aggression." End quote. Now, the New York Times reported that the court is also considering issuing warrants for Hamas leaders. Meanwhile, negotiating teams are meeting today in Egypt for another round of ceasefire talks. This comes after another proof-of-life video of one of the Israeli hostages appeared over the weekend. Hmm. All right. So it's a lot to think about here. Imagine the implications. So far, the U.S. has been able to shield Israel from any kind of global consequences, international community consequences, for his, its actions against the Palestinian people by repeatedly... Uh, vetoing ceasefire resolutions, blocking the recognition of Palestine by the United Nations as a state, and on and on down the line. Of course, also just directly funding Israel in its various campaigns, funding its Iron Dome that allows it to insulate itself from regional consequences and the like. All right. But there's a world where there are many international players who do not actually feel the way that America feels about Israel's behavior. We are... Um, uh, anticipating a decision from the International Court of Justice, uh, the Nicaragua v. Germany decision tomorrow. And there have been ending up, South Africa has been a key player in, in obviously litigating these claims against Israel and the ICJ. So can you, t the question is, is this now a context where the United States can't intervene and basically shield Israelis from consequences for what in various contexts has been described as violations of international law? Mm. I think it's interesting the call to arrest both um, Israeli officials and also Hamas. Um, I, it probably gives it more credibility that they're saying. Yeah, and there are Hamas has are... welcomed this, saying we absolutely invite this inquiry and look at our behavior and make assessments about whether war crimes have been committed. A very different response um, from Benjamin Netanyahu we read there. But who? Um, <laughs> but it starts to get into like, okay, uh, how do you go about on an effort to arrest? Hamas, isn't that sort of what Israel is in fact doing? Well, no. Well, Israel, for example, what if Israeli bomb... officials resist arrest by the by the government's compliance no, the, with the ICC? The idea the is ICC. when you're traveling, you can be arrested in another country that's a member of the ICC. So, for instance, Israel just illegally bombed the um, consulate uh, in Damascus, ostensibly to hit um, Hamas. There's a world where an ICC member country could simply arrest people if they came into the country, if they were actually first found to have committed war crimes. Again, there has back? to be an initial finding. What do you mean? I mean, it seems like a, then that's a call for a conflict between that country and the Israeli officials or between that country and... No, it's country like any, and... any time you can arrest and extradite people, people have various relationships. I mean, arresting involves acts of force and theoretically violence if there's resistance. Are you familiar with Interpol? Are you familiar with Julian Assange? Are you familiar with the idea that countries enforce laws against foreigners within their country all the time? Like, I don't think that's especially anomalous. I don't know if that's the issue here. But, you know, that news is being... Um, I'm saying, wouldn't that be perceived as... A, if, if, Net, if Netanyahu was, like, like arrested when if he, I guess he traveled to some country for a meeting and then the government there arrested him, I mean, it wouldn't Israel would see that as, like... A declaration of war or something. What what is? What, are you thinking? Are you saying that Israel is going to? I'm saying, know, bomb but I'm saying you would never, you United would never, Kingdom because I, I'm saying you would, you would never accuse. You, I, couldn't you just? Couldn't you accuse the ICC of, of escalating the conflict then of starting World War Three? Well, well, no. You're tried in a court of law, and if you're found guilty of a crime, you have to serve your time. 
unless you're making an argument that's very Trumpian that Netanyahu is above the law. I mean, he's facing being thrown into jail in Israel for laws that he's broken in Israel right now. It's part of why people believe that he's instigating and continuing this war and unwilling to get out of a, a wartime position. I'm, I'm, I'm saying I think it's weird not to consider this an act of aggression or hostility or escalation. Um, one point of note, Sam Husseini, he's a journalist that we've uh, covered some of the questioning that he's done really thoughtfully at some of these State Department hearings, has pointed out that the reports of an alleged incoming ICC action on Netanyahu are sourced to Israeli government sources. This was re reported out in the New York Times. Maybe in part intended to distract from the Nicaragua versus Germany ICJ decision tomorrow. The ICC keeps pretending it will do something for the Palestinians and it never has. So there are some who are very skeptical that this will amount to anything at all, that this is a, one of those things where you can just posture like uh, there's a willingness in the international community to actually hold Israel ac accountable, but that it, and it again won't. This comes after, obviously, the whole media cycle that we've had with the Jose Andres people being targeted and killed, um, with the flower massacre and subsequent reporting showing that the Israeli military shot at starving people trying to get aid from the food truck. We just had 240, um, oh no, uh, sorry, that's, that's not the right number, but a number of Palestinians being uh, released from Israeli company uh, custody over the last uh, couple of days who have reported beating, sexual abuse, and torture. You know, you furrow your eyebrows. It's, it's a r amazing how we have direct witness testimony from these people who are leaving Israeli custody, no front page headlines. At the same time, you have the screams without words reporting from the New York Times so roundly debunked that, and this is a new reporting out uh, just today. I did just see a that. A group of 60 um, journalists, or I think it's law professors, uh, journalism professors, call on the New York Times to review that October 7th reporting because it is so deeply flawed. You would think that if there was a sincere interest in covering sexual assault, then there would be headlines the same way there was with screams without words about what these Palestinian um, prisoners in custody, who have been released from custody have been through. That has not been the case. Yeah, we will continue to follow developments there. More rising right after this.